Welcome to Wellness Possibilities with Monica Fuss. And today we're episode five, and we're going to be talking about toxins and how they are lurking in your foods and how you can avoid them. All right. So last week when we were talking about what is a body reset and how do you know if you need one, what to do about it, we're going to kind of continue on that and the fact that we're going to uh, talk about how some of the things that contribute to needing a body reset. And some of those are in our foods. And to start with, I would like to just, uh, just I'm gonna put it out there, that uh, um, what, what's, what are some, I'll, I'll give you six ingredients that cause problems. No, uh, there's actually more than that. I'm gonna just give you some ingredients that, right off the bat that can cause problems. And then we'll talk about what kind of problems they can cause us and why it's so important. Then I've got a, a quick story for you, a personal experience of how those, avoiding those ingredients has made a big difference in our family. So for me personally, as well as with my family. So let's get started, you ready? So part of the toxins that are lurking in our foods are artificial ingredients, really bad toxins, and then some allergens, some typical allergenic and inflammation causing foods. Now let's uh, go into a little bit more detail on that. All right, now you don't have to memorize these because you can go back and watch this video again. Um, but if you can just kind of get the basics in your head, just anything artificial, number one, remember that one. If you remember nothing else from this video, just remember artificial ingredients, our bodies were not made to run on petroleum or any other kind of artificial synthetic ingredient. Our body was intended to function with natural occurring ingredients. And yes, uh, poison ivy is a natural occurring ingredient and it's not really good for our bodies. And there's some other natural ingredients that are not good for our bodies, but definitely not artificial. I mean, my car was made to run on petroleum. You know, gasoline is a derivative of petroleum, or if you have um, um, an electric car, you know, but your, my body was not made to run on petroleum. And one of the, some of the artificial ingredients that are in our foods, believe it or not, are actually created from a derivative of petroleum, from the petroleum industry, even coal tar. And it's like, can you believe that? Or, or uh, I mean, I was surprised when I found out that myself. Even ingredients like leftovers from making paper. Um, one, of, one of the things that's made from that is an artificial vanilla. It, to our tongue, it tastes like vanilla. So that's an artificial flavor that is not, that is not naturally occurring. It's just like whey is the leftover of making cottage cheese from dairy. It's kind of a, a, a byproduct, if you will. Okay, so let's talk about the artificial ingredients you need to stay away from. So number one, just look for the word artificial. And let me back up to that one more time. Anytime you're not picking up a fruit or a vegetable in their raw form, and you're instead you're looking at some sort of packaged product where uh, those in natural ingredients are in there, plus there's maybe some other ingredients, what I would love for you to learn to do starting today or tomorrow, but preferably from this moment forward, I request that you consider taking whatever that boxed or packaged is and turn it over and look for the teeny tiny little print uh, that says ingredients and just scan for it. You don't have to be worried about reading all those words because sometimes there's a bunch of, a bunch of words that um, probably aren't good for us, but I can give you some, some easy, some, well, not necessarily easy, but some simple words to look for. And you can just kind of scan through them as like, look, look for these, all right? So what those are, look for the word artificial. And if you see the word artificial, don't even go any farther. Just like, okay, fine, put that box down, pick up another package and see, you know, make sure it doesn't have it. And also on the front of the package, uh, an example, Here's a cake mix. And on the front of the package, sometimes there is marketing that will, will make you think that everything is just, this is just the healthiest thing in the world, right? But when you flip it over and you look at the ingredient list, 
that teeny tiny little print there, you'll find something on there that just kind of stand, once you start know the keywords to look for, it'll just jump out at you and it's like, whoops, not that box, find a different one, okay? So what we're gonna look for is the word artificial. And then we're also going to look for the words, or, uh, words that are color names, like red, yellow, blue, but then it has a number behind it. And so that combination, is telling us right away that it was created artificially, that it was not, that it's not a color like from beets. You know, beets can make look like something that, you know, any shade of pink to red, or uh, maybe blueberries are gonna make it, you know, kind of a dark blue. Those things are okay. A netto is a, an, an herb that can actually make your foods look yellow. Those are naturally occurring, but if it says, lake number six or red number 40 or blue number whatever the number is you know whatever the color is and it says a number stay away from those find another box okay and flavors sometimes on the outside of the packaging it'll, it'll just tell you right out that there's artificial uh, flavors in it i was looking for a microwave popcorn the other day and I was scanning through the shelves of the different different brands, and right there on the front it said naturally and artificially flavored. Well, I appreciate you putting in the natural stuff, but why did you have to put in the artificial? So I just went on, kept kept looking until I found one that didn't have that on the front of the box, and then I flipped it over to verify on that little bitty print that it there was no artificial in in the ingredient list either. Okay, so if we're gonna stay away from artificial things, there's three categories of artificial. There's artificial colors, there's artificial sweeteners, and there's artificial flavors. So we wanna stay away from all those artificials. And then there's three really bad preservatives that have the biggest impact. You know, kind of like you're all the time hearing about, ooh, stay you know, gluten-free, gluten-free, stay gluten-free. Well, yes, that's important because Gluten has become a problem for a lot of people and maybe not a really bad problem, but it could be an underlying chronic small inflammation that just it's always there. And we because it's, when it's always there, we kind of have a tendency to ignore it. So um, but there's some things that are just really, really bad. And so that there's three preservatives that I was getting ready to tell you about. And one of those is BHA. B is in Baker, H is in Harry, and A is in Apple, BHA, and BHT as in Tom, and then TBHQ. Now, I don't expect you to memorize those in a hurry, but eventually, um, if you write those down, you'll be able to spot those really, really fast. In fact, if you just see some initials as like three characters or four characters, <laughs> Just stay away from them. Stay away from that. Okay, that'll be that'll be the easy way to do that. Simple way. And then some particular allergenic food ingredients that you want to stay away from: gluten, as we've already mentioned. But if you um, most people that have gluten intolerance, whether or not they're celiac, uh, they can have a gluten intolerance. Also, typically have a dairy intolerance. Also. And I know that can make some people feel sad because, you know, it's like, how can I eat whatever food without cheese on it, right? <laughs> but I have learned there are a few alternatives to cheese. If you really need that cheese flavor, there's some natural or more natural things that you can do to get that. Um, and if you want to know that, you just comment, comment below and I'll be glad to share that information with you. Um, let's see. Gluten, dairy, also um, nuts. There are certain tree nuts and stuff that can cause a lot of people problems. I'm one of those that have to stay away from nuts, but not everybody. A lot of people enjoy almonds. A lot of people enjoy almond milk. And so um, yay and, and almond butter, they can, and they can enjoy some nuts, but not every person can. But that's a typical uh, it's a common allergen inflammatory ingredient and uh, shellfish causes a lot of people a problem like shrimp and um, oysters and things like that. Not everybody is that away. 
And those are, those are some, some common ones. So uh, if you want to turn off the faucet of the, before the tub is overflowing, before your body is overflowing with allergenic reactions, then those are some places to start. Now, I was gonna tell you first what they are because I like to do things out of order of what most people do. They, they build up this really big story of telling you why and they make you wait till 10 minutes later to, to find out, well, what are those ingredients I need to stay away from? I wanna tell you right up front. Here's the ingredients. Now we're gonna talk about why to stay away from those ingredients. And I'm going to share my screen here for, I'm gonna pull up something on my screen here real quick to share with you some of the symptoms just from artificial sweeteners. Now, not everybody are gonna have these symptoms and I'm not a doctor and I'm not saying, hey, absolutely this, you know, if you have any kind of artificial sweetener, this, you're gonna have these problems. You may or may or not. But just like the bathtub doesn't spill water all over the floor immediately, it, you may have symptom here, a symptom there, and the uh, toxic effect of the artificial sweeteners it may take a while for your body to really show that. And you can see in this slide that was created by um, uh, Dr. Juckers.com, uh, talking about aspartame side effects. And some of those you would might notice right away, maybe bloating, maybe the ex eczema, itching. You know, you would know that, you would notice that right away, and especially if it caused diarrhea or dizziness. Um, those, those are things that are, are noticeable, even hives, those would be noticeable. But you might not be paying attention if there's just a little bit of brain fog. You know, you might might blow it off as like, yeah, today I just haven't, I just didn't sleep very well last night. Or, you know, you may find out another thing to blame it on and you may not get, be able to put two and two together to say, oh, when I have this artificial thing, then I end up having this, you know, brain fog. You, you might not be, be able to put those together. So the reason for bringing up this list for you is to give you something to think about. It's like, huh, maybe I need to be paying a little more attention or maybe, uh, maybe you're a little more irritable on some days than other days. And yeah, there's a lot of reasons to be irritable, but what if, if you're using artificial sweeteners, maybe you had to consider giving it up for 30 days and see at the end of the 30 days if you're still getting as irritable and brain foggy as you were before. So something to consider on that. Even confusion, um, hyperactivity, not every, our anxiety, those are those those symptoms are not really readily noticeable versus a rash or 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 um, or those other things I was talking about just a minute ago muscle spasms um, the uh, <laughs> even headaches you know you may you may be a delayed effect you know it doesn't you know. You drink your coffee with your artificial sweetener in there and immediately you get a headache. Well, maybe not. Maybe your headache doesn't show up for an hour later. And by then you've already finished your coffee and you're off to something else. And now you have a headache. And so it's more difficult to figure out, oh, it may have been something I, I, I ate an hour ago that caused it. So these are just some of the symptoms of just one of those artificial things I was talking about. Now, artificial colors have had a lot of um, effects on different people. In particular, we've seen a lot with um, children with displaying because their bodies are so small and, this, and, and when they have the same amount as an adult has, um, their body reacts a little more great greater than an adult because they have less cells to to work with and so like artificial color they could eat that same popsicle and you have a popsicle and the child is going to just like go into cook a little bit wacko that's not the right word but maybe just running around like crazy and they were just nice and you know, they were fairly calm a while ago and, and you're thinking, oh, that sugar that was in there caused them to go um, running all over the yard. And, and that may not be it. It may be the artificial color that did that. That may be that red number 40 or that yellow 
that blue, that purple, that might have that might have been what caused it. Okay, so those are some symptoms. You know, artif the hyperactivity is one of the symptoms. I think I have another slide here that may tell some other symptoms. No, I don't have that handy right now. Um, but anyway, and then the artificial flavors. I was really surprised when I was doing my research on artificial flavors. And what I found that um, artificial flavors are derived from petroleum or other substances that we cannot eat. That's what the definition says on, on uh, foodrevolutionnetwork.org slash natural flavors. And natural flavors are generally derived from originally from a natural source, but they can have some chemical ingredients with combined with them. And then there are um, uh, organic natural flavors, and those are 95% or more just originally grown ingredients. So to me, the ideal would be to look for organically natural flavor, not just natural flavor, but organically natural flavor when you are uh, looking at packages of what you're going to get. And I didn't write down No, nope, I didn't write down what it was, what, what that natural, that artificial flavor can cause. But just knowing, for me as a logic person, and you may not be a logic person, but for me as a logic person, to know that I am consuming something that was not intended for me, for a, for a human to eat, like petroleum, or out like going out there and uh, grinding up a piece of the asphalt, you know, that was not intended for people to consume. And why would, why not, why would not our body say, wait a minute, this is toxic. What do I do with this? And, and cause some sort of reaction. Okay, same thing with the, uh, the preservatives I was talking about, the BHA, the BHT, and the TBHQ. Those can cause um, emotional and um, cognitive disruptions as well as digestive issues of not only bloated stomachs and gas and diarrhea and those sort of things, but they can also cause us to have the headaches, cause us to have ir irritability and other uh, emotional hyperactivity, other emotional kinds of reactions. And when you are in a, getting ready for a business meeting and you want to be your, at, your, at your sharpest or you're a student and you're getting ready to take a test and you need all the brain cells working full speed ahead, you know, so you can not only pass that test, but you can ace it, okay? Um, then staying away from those preservatives and those artificial ingredients are highly important, right? And there, there are also ways to avoid having to do the body reset. And not that body reset's a problem, it's just like the need for it because the need for it is a bunch of symptoms of being tired all the time. Let's, let's flip over to that list. Let me share the screen with you of the list to remind you are some of the things that we want to avoid. Some, some of the things that those toxins can cause in us, they like chronic fatigue, unmotivated. Uh, we have food cravings, low energy, low interest. I mentioned the foggy brain a minute ago. Uh, even the whites of our eyes could, could lose their brightness or our nails and our hair can become brittle. Our skin becomes dry, particularly our lips can become overly dry and cracked. Besides, um, but, you know, digestive, in, you know, digestive issues I was talking about, I, I mentioned several of those a minute ago. Um, just, just a lack of energy totally. Just, I mean, just, just a lack of interest in the things that you normally enjoy. Besides what our body does when it is fighting a toxin, it doesn't know what to do with it. A lot of times it's the natural defense system is to create a new fat cell and stick that toxin in it to protect your organs. 
protect your heart, protect your liver, protect, protect your kidneys, you know, protect that brain. It creates a new fat cell and sticks that in there. And those fat cells, if you have more and more toxins and putting more, you know, your body's fighting it by, by hiding them and in, in, in putting them in prison in a, in a, a fat cell, and you are accumulating these fat cells, what's going to happen then is like, oh my gosh, your, your clothes are not going to fit like they used to anymore. And, and it's, you, you, will, you will think you have a weight problem. And really what you have is a more, more likely a toxin problem. And what the body reset does is to number one, we teach you how to avoid those things, which I brought up what some of those things are that you need to avoid. And number two, I can tell you how to a next step is to do a body cleanse and I can teach you how to do that in a fun and enjoyable, tasty way. Now, what else I promised you with this episode is to also share with you uh, a story, a, a quick little personal story of how these artificial ingredients and these uh, preservatives have an, impacted my family. So, um, when, when our kids were in uh, middle school or elementary, probably sixth grade or so, fifth, sixth grade, um, we noticed that our daughter, my, my chiropractor and I had pretty much figured out that um, our, my daughter had uh, sensitivity to gluten. And so I was working hard to keep, you know, to find alternatives for gluten for her because she was having a lot of focus issues with school. She was, she was not um, having, she was having problems with friendships at school. She would maybe have one friend. And then if she tried to have another friend, all of a sudden there were conflicts going on. It was difficult for her to maintain more than one friendship at a time. And her grades were suffering. I had phone calls from the teachers a couple of times that, um, that uh, was inappropriate behaviors with um, bullying and uh, writing on another child, writing on their skin. And I was like, oh my gosh, we didn't teach her that at our house. And uh, her grades suffered. Some days she would come home with really good grades, other grades, other days we'd come home and, and she was uh, having, um, you know, she flunked that test and, and, and it'd be like, she had really good days and really good bad days. And I know that childhood, that's kind of normal, but this was, if you would call it more so, uh, just in our, our son, some days he, he'd be a typical, um, excited kid having, having fun and running around. But there were other days that he would just get, he would get so excited. His hands would, would flap, you know, I call it his wings, you know, he's like, Oh, I'm so excited. You know, I was like, okay, I'm glad you're excited. And we ended up, um, because because we saw more and more issues with our daughter, it was hard for us to stay on top of it with her, that uh, she would have problems sitting at the table for an entire meal. So it was always like a million different reasons why she needed to get up. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Oh, I need the ketchup. Oh, I need this. I need that. I need this. And I finally was, you know, sit still. I'll go get it for you. She, she couldn't, she couldn't sit still. And let me go get it for her. Uh, I tried bribing her. I tried I tried discipline, none of it, nothing worked. Okay. I was a, I was a good parent. I would not do any abuse, but you know, it was like, if I, I, I was, I wanted to be like, well, you please keep your bottom in the chair for the entire meal. But anyway, what was really the key was is the, the difficulty she was having concentrating for at school. So um, I became aware of a blood test that could be done to find out if there was something that was indicative of um, ADHD and food sensitivities. And uh, what I found out was that there was a whole list of foods. I think I mentioned that a while ago that she couldn't have because, and when we started getting rid of those ingredients um, in, our, in our meals and, and in the food that we had in the house, within a week, just one short week, she could sit still for an entire meal. When school started up after the summer that we started this program, this program of getting off all of those things, when school started up, first time ever, she made the honor roll. And it's like, oh my gosh, I feel like my daughter is blooming. You know, she's been a bud for so long and now she's blooming into her full potential. It's like, wow, 
I knew she was a smart girl, but I couldn't figure out why her grades were fluctuating so much. And, and, and like I, I think I might have mentioned to you before, I can't remember, but um, when I saw that list of all the foods that she couldn't have, I was like, oh my God, what, what can you eat? You know, I was kind of frustrated. It's like, I got to avoid all these things. What can you eat? And I realized, I remembered it's like, oh, wait a minute. The Arbonne protein shakes that I, I, I drink myself and I share with some people. Here, honey, have this chocolate protein shake. Mix it, mix it with the non-dairy milk that I have with for you and, and throw in some ice cubes in the blender and whip that up and it'll taste like a chocolate milkshake for breakfast. And I'll know that you're getting some good protein and nutrition and staying away from those artificial everything and you're staying away from the soy and the, and the wheat and the dairy. You know, I, I, I know you're staying away from the things that are bad for you and there's no none of those nasty preservatives in there. So, uh, she started drinking those for breakfast. And so uh, until I could figure out what else she could have, what I could buy at the grocery store that would actually um, be nutritious for her without all those bad ingredients and switching which brands I would buy. You know, just like, just like buying, buying cake mix, I saw two cake mixes that sounded really good. I wanted to whip up a, whip up a cake real quick. I didn't have time to do it from scratch. So I said, hey, both of these look good. But then when I turned, turned them over and looked at the microscopic ingredient list, at the bottom on both of them, it said contains wheat. I was like, well, I guess I can't get either one of those for if my daughter's going to eat it. Uh, so I need to stay away from that for her, but probably need to stay away from that for me too. But then I noticed, oh, this one says artificial. So if I was going to pick one of those just because of the artificial stuff, I, I would you know, I'd pick one versus the other one. But the other quick story I wanted to tell you is once we changed the way the foods that we ate, you know, paid attention to the ingredients and stayed away from all the artificials, we stayed away from those bad preservatives, we stayed away from the um, allergenic and foods that she was sensitive to. And I already knew I was sensitive, I was sensitive to some of those plus some she wasn't. Um, we stayed away from all those. I guess we've been doing that for probably three months, two months, three months something like that. Um, sitting at the dinner table one night, my husband asked our children, was like, okay, so have you noticed any changes in mom and dad since we changed our food, our foods that we eat? And they both like almost simultaneously came up with, yeah, dad, you don't drive as fast as you used to. And it's like, hmm, well, he had given up his art his artificial sweeteners and colors in the diet coke that he was drinking he gave up diet coke which have all those natural uh, all those artificial ingredients in them and so he had given that up at, even at work and evidently that was making a difference and i uh, made a difference when i got off of the tbhq or even the artificial vanilla artificial vanilla was ca caused me a problem i got an award at work one day uh, you know what, thank you from the boss, you know, like, hey, you did this extra thing, we really appreciate it here, I'm passing out, you know, this chocolate bar to you, and I didn't think about it at the time to check the ingredient list, I just enjoyed my reward, and it's like, mm -mm -mm, good chocolate, okay, and later that evening when I got home, I was more irritable than I had been in ages, and um, so I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm responding to my family this way. So I pulled the package out, looked at the, you know, turned it over, read the ingredient list. And, oh my gosh, right there staring me in the face was the artificial vanilla. And it was like, even when I was a kid, I was allergic to and had a reaction somehow. I don't, I don't remember what mom said it was, but I, I had a reaction to artificial vanilla. And so it makes a difference in how we respond to life when we give our body natural ingredients that were made to be consumed versus ones that are, are, are made from artificial and synthetic ingredients. So what I would just a reminder of what I hope you got out of today's episode is to pay attention to what you're putting on, into your body. And also, while we're talking about that, let me just add this little, little amend it a little bit, but it's, it's also what you put on your skin. 
because there's pay attention to the on the ingredient list. Just start being a little bit of a, a ingredient list reader and and turn that package over and see if that lotion or that that cleanser that you're going to put on your face has some sort of artificial colors in it then you maybe want to avoid that and get a different brand because it is absorbed through your skin. So be a label reader and stay away from everything that's artificial. And then the best you can, stay away from the common allergenic foods. And I challenge you for even just 30 days, stay away from all of those three things and pay attention to how different you might feel and how you might respond differently to everyone else in your family and in your workplace or at school. It may make a big difference. And definitely the accumulation of it will be less. Okay. So thank you so much for being here for Wellness Possibilities with Monica Fuss with episode five, staying away from the toxins that are lurking in your foods. And I invite you to like this episode and even subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel. So talking to you next, I'll be back next Monday. Have a great day and be well.